So if I ever wanted to get an absolute paste in, in the comments here on YouTube, I'd probably release a video called why most bass players suck. There is a knowledge gap when it comes to really understanding what a bass player really does within a band. And number two, how to do it. To be an effective bass player, you need to be able to do this thing. And in this video, I'm gonna be telling you exactly what that thing is and how to get it onto the instrument so you are an effective bass player and you don't suck. Now when it comes to bass, what does a bass player do in a band, okay? Do they just play the guitar part an octave down, okay? Well, no, yes, sometimes we do that, but most of the time we're doing other stuff as well, right? So do we just play the root notes of the chord the guitar player's playing? The guitar player's playing this, you know, we're playing. Okay, well, yeah, we do that, but what else do we do? We play chords, but instead of playing them like this, like these guys do, okay, we go Okay, now what did I do there? All I did is I outlined the chords So why as bass players when we open up books beginner bass books we see scales and modes why is nobody actually calling out and saying hey we do the same thing as everybody else but instead of just playing the chords as these you know chunky kind of like all all in one things right you guys okay the bass players you have to play the chords but in a linear fashion one note at a time okay if you are a bass player if you are a bass player, which I'm assuming you are watching this video, and you do not know your arpeggios, you are like a guitar player who cannot play the chords. So this is why so many bass players are actually ineffective bass players. They don't know their arpeggios and they've never practiced using them within the context of bass line creation, you know, using chord tones to create bass lines. It's absolutely not their fault, okay? The actual fault lies at this sort of like misinformation or gap in information where people open bass books, begin a bass books for the first time and they're hammered with hey here's a major scale and here is seven modes of the major scale here go learn your phrygian minor and have a great day it's like seriously okay you need to learn your chord tones again i'm not taking a stab at any bass players out there right i'm just calling out that we need to learn our arpeggios and if you do not know your arpeggios you are like a guitar player who doesn't know their chords. Let's come up with a, se a, a chord sequence, right? It's a, it's a C major, and then it moves to like a A dominant seven, and then it goes to a D minor, and then it goes to a G seven, okay? And, and you're saying this to the guitar player, and they're like, yeah, I don't know any chords. Let's play a C major triad. In fact, let's just keep it at triads for now, okay? So C major triad. So that's a, a triad, C, E, and G. Triad, three, get it? So, and then I've just put the C on the top. Okay, so in this measure of the chord sequence, I can use any of these notes and it's gonna sound cool, okay? I'm playing the chords. A7, well you've got an A here, we've got A, C sharp, which is the major third, the five, okay, and then, We've got the root, okay? These aren't even the full arpeggios. These are just the triads, right? A, C sharp, E, and then A. Now D minor, we've got D, F, and A, okay? So we've got D, F, A, and then finally, we've got G, B, and D. And again, these aren't even the full arpeggios. These are the very basic chords, C, E, G, a, C sharp, E, D, F, A, and G, B, and D. So. Okay. 
if you're into this, if you're enjoying what I'm talking about now and you want to learn more about this, I've actually got a six month program that teaches you step by step how to do this in a super systematic way. You get to work with me personally over six months. We open it for enrollment once a year. It's open for enrollment right now. So all you need to do is click the link down below. It will take you through and you can check it out. Okay. So if you do want it, it's called the Fretboard Accelerator and it's teaching all of this stuff, but in depth in a very systematic way. Okay. So let's get a drum machine on. If you go to the app store and it's on Android as well, and just write SBL Groove Trainer, you'll find a free drum machine with loads of cool loops. This one is called, this is Nate, it's Nate Wood um, and it's at 85 BPM. It's called Killing Me Softly. Okay, so just imagine the guitar playing, the keys play. They're just playing the chords, right? Here we go, C major. A, D minor, G7, C major, A7. Now you're playing the bass line. Now you've been in that situation before where you're like, oh, I'm playing this bass line, I wanna play some more notes, but what do I play? I can't hear it, it sounds weird. I'm looking for that one pattern that works over everything, okay? Well, we need to be able to use the chords to be an effective bass player, right? So we can use that. So on this, um, the C major, we can use any of these notes, A7, any of these notes and onward, okay? So you know the patterns now, okay? So let's see if we can use that in a bass line. Three, four, let's do roots to start with. All I was doing there is just using the basic triads to outline the chord. And you should have been able to really hear me playing around the chord. C major, to that A7 there, to the, to the D minor, to that G7. And just to make this really easy so you can see where I'm, do, where I'm going with this, okay? These are all the roots, okay? So the roots are all the ones in red, there. Okay, the thirds are in the greens. That's the thirds of the chords. And then we've got hot pink for the fifths, okay? So you can see they're the roots, they're the thirds, and they're the fifths of the chord. And just by approaching it like this, I'm not thinking modes and I'm not thinking scales or anything like that. And I'm not, if anybody's about to call me out and say, but modes and scales are important, Mr. Divine. I wish somebody called me Mr. Divine. Mm. But modes and scales are important. They are important, but only after we really thoroughly understand what we are doing as bass players, how to be an effective bass player and how we should be approaching it. And we should be approaching it like everybody else in the band. As a bass player, to be an effective bass player, we need to be able to outline the chords within a chord sequence. So whatever chord sequence there is, you should be able to have that information, the arpeggios, you got it, the arpeggios under your fingers. The way that we can approach playing around the neck is by learning our arpeggios on the neck, which are the chords. Nobody seemed to put it out into the universe. So with all of that said, thanks for watching this video. If you do wanna check out my six month program called the Fretboard Accelerator, where I teach this stuff and take you through a, a journey. Me and you on a journey for six months together. It is a really phenomenal program. It's the only program out there like it on the planet. And we only open it for enrollment once a year. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. The link is below. Um, so yeah, take it easy. We'll see you in the shed.